Welcome to Movie Galaxy. The year is 2075, Earth is suffering from a water crisis. The oceans are shrinking, rain no longer falls, and many babies are dying because the water they drink is dirty. There's not enough food either, even though the government tries to grow it indoors but the vertical farms can't produce enough for everyone. Owning pets is against the law. The government is trying to manage and regulate the water. Rationing water now depends on a person's social class. They give special cards to the higher class which gives them unlimited access to water, so they can have as much as they want. But this has made many poor people angry, and there have been lots of riots. At the Environment for Human Survival Research Center, Song is working with plants and animals. Section Chief Kim from the Space and Aeronautics Division, SA, visits her and invites her to join their mission. At first, Song says no, but she decides to join when she learns it's about the Balhi Lunar Station where her sister passed away five years ago. Due to her sister's death, Song received a gold card from the government. She attends a meeting to understand the mission and meet the crew. The Balhi station had to shut down because of a radiation problem five years ago. The team's mission is to retrieve some important samples and special containers from the moon to bring back to Earth for study. When they land on the moon, they only have 24 hours to finish the job, and the containers need to be kept cold. They have to be really careful because if the containers get damaged, it could be a big problem. The team doesn't know what's in the containers or where they are exactly, which seems suspicious. Just before they take off, they're surprised to find out that the usual co-pilot has been replaced by someone they don't know named Lee. They blast off from Earth and everything goes smoothly until they get closer to the moon. The alarm goes off, indicating trouble with the docking system. This means the bolt holding them together might not hold during landing. Unable to contact the Space and Aeronautics Division, SA, they decide to release the landing module early. But when they try to start the main engine, it won't ignite. They switch to using the thrust controls instead, but those fail too. The spaceship crashes onto the ground and skids until it's stuck upside down on the edge of a deep hole. With no way to communicate with the Space and Aeronautics Division, SA, and the station being over 7 kilometers away, they have no choice but to start walking toward Balhi Station, since they only have limited oxygen. Shortly after, Huang collapses due to his punctured lungs. His suit is out of water, and when the others try to help him, he stops them and vomits blood before passing away. The crew decides to leave his body behind temporarily, planning to retrieve it later when they're rescued. They continue their journey, leaving a vial of water with him as a sign of respect. As they reach the station, their oxygen levels are dangerously low, at just 1%. They rush inside, barely able to stand, and managed to seal the airlock just in time. In a flashback, Song is shown in her previous lab attempting to decode a message left by her sister. In the present, the crew replenishes their oxygen supplies before venturing out to explore the station. Since it's dark, their initial objective is to locate the power source. As they move through the hallway, the crew is startled to discover a body lying on the ground. It's evident that there have been numerous attempts to breach the station since its closure, and the equipment, an attire suggests the deceased is a mercenary, likely employed by the resource mafia. A rapid examination reveals that he drowned, which doesn't add up. As they continue their exploration, the crew receives another shock. The radiation levels are normal. Song becomes increasingly suspicious of the government's deception and suggests performing an autopsy on the mercenary to assess any potential threats they might face. However, Captain Han insists they keep moving. Finally, the team arrives at the main hub and successfully restores power. Although the communication system remains offline, the radiation levels are safe, and there's an abundance of oxygen. Feeling relieved, they remove their helmets and activate the air filtration system throughout the rest of the base. Upon examining a map of the base, they notice some red zones that necessitate level 1 authorization and were sealed off due to alleged radiation contamination. With three storage areas and eight gates to investigate, Captain Han decides to divide the group into three teams. Han's team arrives at Storage 1, but the door refuses to open, requiring them to pry it open manually. As they manage to open it slightly, an arm unexpectedly falls through. Upon fully opening the door, they discover the bodies of the previous crew inside, all dead by drowning as the mercenary. It becomes evident that radiation wasn't the cause of their deaths. They see blood handprints on the walls suggesting the crew attempted to escape but it appears the area was sealed off abruptly in an emergency. This revelation indicates that the crew perished after the shutdown, contradicting the government's previous claims. Upon entering Storage 1, 
Han's team observes evidence suggesting someone had already been there. Although they find capsules on the ground, they're all devoid of contents. Meanwhile, Song's team proceeds to storage 3, but their progress halts when they detect an unusual biosignature on the scanner. Since it appears to be moving solo, it cannot be attributed to a crew member. Chief Gong opts to investigate further, instructing his teammates to remain behind. Because things are getting strange, Li tells Song that she was correct to be worried. He says he'll watch over things while she looks for medical records in the infirmary. Once Song leaves, Li goes into storage 3. Only to realize that the power is out in this area and all the capsules are empty. By mistake, he drops his flashlight. When he tries to grab it from under the furniture, something grabs the flashlight instead. After the initial surprise, Lee cautiously tries again, and this time finds a capsule full of water. While the team heading to storage 2 investigates, they stumble upon unsettling drawings on the ceiling. Despite the presence of bodies on the ground, radiation isn't the cause of death, as the levels are normal. Upon closer inspection, Su Chan notices one of the bodies clutching a capsule. As he tries to remove it from the stiff fingers, he mistakenly presses the body's chest, causing it to expel a strange spore that enters his eyes. The capsule Su Chan grabbed turns out to be empty as well, so the team decides to head back. However, as they make their way out, Su Chan starts feeling strange. Water droplets seem to move under his skin, and he begins to hallucinate, seeing things things that are not there. In the present, Song receives a message from Gong informing her that he lost the peculiar signal and is returning, leaving her with no choice but to head back without finding the symbol. When Song arrives at the storage, she finds Li by the door. Suddenly, something drags him back into the room. Without hesitation, Song rushes inside and witnesses Li being choked against the ceiling. Tragically, Li succumbs to the attack, and the mysterious entity drops his lifeless body onto the floor before snatching the capsule and vanishing. As Song tries to examine further, the entity disappears without a trace. Just as this unfolds, Gong returns and alerts the rest of the crew. Dr. Hong examines Li's body and makes a chilling discovery. He has fractures all over, matching what Song is telling them. Han, still skeptical, reviews the footage from Song's body cam, which confirms the presence of the mysterious entity. They investigate further, moving some stuff to reveal an extensive vent system. Now, they must decide whether to explore it. Meanwhile, some crew members go back to the main hub, where Su Chan suddenly begins vomiting water uncontrollably. His teammates quickly call for assistance. Upon Hong's arrival, she tilts Su Chan's head back, facilitating the continuous expulsion of water. Acting swiftly, the doctor makes an incision in Su Chan's throat and inserts a tube, causing the water to gush out like a fountain. She then takes a blood sample, only to find it watery as well. Despite their efforts, water continues to flow endlessly from the tube and Su Chan eventually succumbs, drowning in the same manner as the bodies they encountered earlier. Hong proceeds to conduct an autopsy on Li's body, while Song, disregarding Han's objections, investigates the data storage. Despite the growing danger and the crew's desire to abandon the mission, Han insists that they continue. He takes a group of men with him to hunt for the entity, instructing the others to prioritize re-establishing communications at all costs. Han's team ventures into the vents, and encounters the eerie drawings on the walls once more. Suddenly, their scanner detects a biosignal heading their way, but it appears to be located elsewhere in the facility as it passes directly above them. The team attempts to follow the signal's direction and stumbles upon a locked door. Just as the team is about to attempt to unlock the door, they receive a call from the crew in the main hub, informing them of progress with the communications. Meanwhile, Sitchin's body is transported to the infirmary, where Hong begins the autopsy. Song attempts to access the medical records but finds them all locked. She then moves on to collect tissue samples from the other bodies present. Shortly after, Song returns to the infirmary, where Hong tells her that the body was filled with water internally, with no external signs of damage. Song notes that the other bodies exhibited similar symptoms. Upon examining the tissue samples, she realizes that the previous crew members were in perfect health at the time of their deaths, showing no signs of virus or bacteria infection. Furthermore, Sitchin's blood appears to contain an unknown substance. Meanwhile, the others tell Han that they need to repair the digital unit to make further progress. Typically, the elevator would transport them there, but it's currently not working. Consequently, someone will need to descend manually, a perilous task. Han steps forward to volunteer for the job. Before he leaves, Song shares a theory with him, 
She speculates that the creature refrained from harming her and seems acquainted with the base's layout, suggesting it might be a survivor, but Han remains skeptical of this possibility. Shortly after, Song and Hong examine the water vomited by Su Chan and observe that it's distilled. It appears that the water itself is the virus, possibly of extraterrestrial origin, and it might offer a solution to Earth's drought problem. Since it's not airborne, something must have occurred five years ago to facilitate its spread among the previous crew. Meanwhile, outside, Han cautiously begins his descent to reach the unit. Suddenly, the elevator unexpectedly starts moving on its own, and the computer controls fail to halt it. Han manages to hold on, and moves out of harm's way just in time. As the elevator crashes into the station, the power momentarily goes out, only to quickly return. However, this time, his body collides with the metal, damaging his oxygen system. Han starts hallucinating about his sick daughter back on Earth. Han resolves to press on rather than retreat. With determination, he continues and successfully locates the unit. Han swiftly replaces a panel to enable the team to reboot the system, but he faints afterward. Fortunately, the crew acts promptly to get him inside and revive him back to consciousness. However, they tell him sad news, the communications are still down. Despite the computer being fully operational, there's no signal for some unknown reason. Suddenly, they detect an unfamiliar signal emanating from Storage 3. Curious, they head there to investigate. To their surprise, the room is empty. However, upon inspecting Lee's body, they discover an old communicator, indicating that he was a rogue agent. With this device, they make the communication system work and talk to Director Choi of the Space and Aeronautics Division, SA. Han tells her everything that's been happening. Choi tells him to focus on finding the entity, and Han asks for the codes to get into restricted areas. He notices that Choi doesn't seem surprised by what he's saying, so he thinks she might know more than she's saying. Meanwhile, Song walks around the station and eventually finds a door with a sign on the floor, but she can't open it without the correct code. She goes back to the lab and decides to do a new experiment. She drips some blood onto a sample of vomited water, and it quickly starts to multiply very fast. They quickly spray it with fire extinguishers, and all the drops freeze immediately, proving that the water can only reproduce if its host is alive. Song hurries to find Han and tells him that the sample they collected has always been just water, accusing him of keeping secrets. In a flashback, it's shown that Kim and Choi informed Han before the mission that Song's sister, Wonkyum, had discovered water on the moon, leading to the construction of the Balhi station to study the water. Han informs the group about this revelation and admits he kept the secret to shield them from potential spies like Lee. However, Song interrupts him, explaining that the lunar water is what caused the deaths because it can't be managed. She suspects the government is concealing this truth to potentially exploit it for profit, disregarding the risks involved. Later, in private, Song confides in Han that her sister wished for her to be part of this mission and requests the access codes from him. They approach the door marked with the symbol and after Han discreetly disables their body cams, he inputs the code, finally unlocking the door. The walls are filled with data panels, and to their surprise, they find leaves on a hatch in the floor. Opening it reveals a lengthy tunnel overgrown with plants. Song and Han quickly gather the rest of the team, and they decide to explore further. Eventually, they stumble upon a control room containing many sample capsules, one of which is broken on the floor, with plants sprouting from it. As the team starts collecting capsules to bring back, Han spots movement among the vines. Suddenly, other crew members notice something in the hallway and scream before fleeing. A creature emerges and rips off E-1's arm to snatch his capsule. Song shoots the creature to force it to drop the sample, and it scurries away into the vines. Hong checks on E-1 only to find that he has passed away. The team cautiously approaches the vines and opens fire when the creature moves, behaving like a monkey as it jumps and climbs around. When she notices them approaching, she dashes away and escapes through the upper tunnel, knocking out E2 in the process. The team attempts to pursue her but realizes that the sample she dropped earlier has broken, causing the water to mix with E1's blood and multiply rapidly. Panicked, the crew hurries to retrieve the sample briefcase and rushes to climb out while hearing an alarm sounding off in the control room. They lift E2 and ensure the hatch is securely locked before hurrying to the infirmary. Later, Hong and Song perform surgery on E2 due to blood in his lungs, with Ryu needing to donate blood to assist. Once Ryu is alone in the infirmary, he discloses that he possesses an additional communicator and sends a message to someone indicating he has a sample. The unidentified individual responds with instructions to eliminate all witnesses. 
The crew then gathers to discuss the events, with Song proposing a theory that the girl is attempting to prevent them from taking the capsules. Han contacts Choi to confirm they have secured the samples and informs her about the entity being a young girl. However, Choi instructs him to eliminate her regardless. After the call ends, Han then instructs Song and Hong to return to the tunnel to gather more information, while he heads back to Storage 3. Meanwhile, in the mysterious tunnel, Song and Hong access the database. Song confesses that she had no idea her sister was on the lunar base until she was informed of her death. Won Kyung had tried to call her once before the accident, but Song missed the call and now regrets it. When they finally manage to breach the computer's security, they are shocked to find that all the data has been wiped out. Song and Hong returns to the infirmary and catches Ryu attempting to take the samples, claiming he has orders from Han. Song becomes suspicious and intervenes, prompting Ryu to pull out his gun to threaten them. However, they are all taken aback when they spot the girl at the door. Ryu attempts to shoot her, but the girl effortlessly dodges the bullets and tackles Ryu to the ground. As the rest of the crew arrives, Song cautiously demonstrates that they mean no harm and places a capsule down for the girl, who has a tag bearing Song's sister's name. When the girl reaches for the sample, Ryu destroys it with a shot, causing the girl to collapse in a seizure. Song observes the protrusions on the girl's cheeks moving like gills, but the girl flees before Song can examine them closely. Afterwards, Song stores away all the other capsules and informs the crew that the water cannot harm the girl. Some crew members express a desire to kill her, but Song prohibits it, emphasizing that the girl represents humanity's best chance for salvation. Later, Han contacts Kim, who reveals that it was Choi who ordered the shutdown of the station, and not everyone in the SA agreed with this decision. Kim declines to share further details but urges Han to collaborate with Song to uncover the truth. Meanwhile, Ryu sends a message requesting backup forces. He receives a call from his contact, who turns out to be an American man instructing him to eliminate everyone and head to Gate 7. Ryu quickly gathers all the samples and prepares to leave. However, E2 regains consciousness and witnesses everything. E2 attempts to follow Ryu, who responds by shooting him and disposing of all the evidence. Meanwhile, Han informs the rest of the team that their plan is to lure the girl out and capture her alive. Using the scanner, they pinpoint the girl's location, and Song positions herself in the hallway with a sample in her hands. Suddenly, the girl emerges from the vents, prompting Song to place the sample down and slowly back away. Han swiftly closes the first gate and pulls Song out, allowing him to close the second gate, trapping the girl. However, as the gates close, the girl's leg becomes stuck. Despite being bitten by the girl, Song notices a tag on her neck reading, Luna 073. Calling her by this name, Song manages to calm the girl, who begins to cry. Han administers a sedative shot to the girl, and Song swiftly opens the door to comfort her. At that same moment, Ryu initiates the closure of all gates from the main terminal. Luna panics and attempts to escape through a vent, prompting Song to grab the sample and follow her just before the gate closes, separating her from the rest of the team. Meanwhile, Hong discovers e Tu's body inside the freezer while locked in the infirmary, and she informs the others about the grim discovery. Sun rushes through an entrance just before the gate shuts, heading towards the command center. Han and Gong manage to pass through a few doors, but they too become trapped, leading them to opt for the vents as an alternate route. While navigating through the vents, Song encounters difficulties as her map malfunctions and communication with the others becomes impossible. However, Luna waits for her, indicating the way forward. After a considerable amount of wandering, Song stumbles upon an office that Luna has turned into her personal sanctuary. The walls are adorned with drawings, there's a collection of capsules, and pictures of the old crew, including Won Kyung, on the lunar station. Song shares some candy with Luna, and when the girl eventually falls asleep, Song discovers the missing data brick. Connecting it to a computer, she accesses a video titled, Water Response Test in which the previous crew conducted experiments on lunar water using a fish. The small fish survived, and the lunar water filled a container. Additionally, Song comes across a video labeled, Luna, and is horrified to learn that the previous crew conducted genetic experiments on human clones. Each time a Luna clone failed a test and died, they would replace her with a new one, resulting in the number attached to her name increasing with each iteration. The current Luna is the 73rd clone and the only one to have survived. In another video, Won Kyung explains that she initiated these experiments to save humanity, although she expresses regret for her actions. Feeling compelled by the circumstances, 
Song injects Luna with the water sample, which promptly heals her wounds. Meanwhile, Hong manages to escape the infirmary through the vents. After wandering for some time, she is astonished to stumble upon a storage area filled with hundreds of Lunas stored in bags. Startled, she lets out a scream when someone touches her, but it turns out to be Han. Together, they discover a door at the end of the storage that leads them close to the control room. Meanwhile, Sun reaches the command center, only to be confronted by Ryu, who points a gun at him. Reacting quickly, Ryu pushes Sun and fires a shot, injuring him. Seizing the opportunity, Sun retaliates, disarming Ryu and initiating a fight. The two men wrestle, and after Ryu pushes Sun away, he grabs his gun and shoots Sun again. Sun, realizing he's fallen near the suitcase, manages to grab a sample before getting shot once more, causing the capsule to fall and break. Ryu then locks Sun up and observes as the water starts multiplying with his blood. Sun becomes infected, experiencing hallucinations of a starfish before vomiting large amounts of water and ultimately drowning to death. Afterward, Ryu attempts to activate the air filtration system but encounters a problem in the pressure system. The water from the plant rooms has spread and flooded the area, causing a problem in the pressure system. Despite the warning, Ryu opens the filtration system, allowing the water to continue spreading unchecked. Soon, Han and Hong descend from the vent and discover Sun's body but no sign of Ryu. Han swiftly opens all the gates, providing the water with even more space to expand. Meanwhile, Gong remains in the vents and eventually locates Luna's hideout. He considers shooting the girl, but Song intervenes. Gong informs Han of the situation and Han instructs him to keep Luna and Song alive and bring them to the control room. After a long search, Han finally locates Ryu and engages in a fierce brawl. The two men grapple for control of the gun, inadvertently firing shots that puncture holes in the ceiling. Despite their struggle, Han manages to gain the upper hand and attempts to choke Ryu. In the scuffle, Ryu accidentally drops his communicator. Just as the confrontation reaches a critical point, the filtration system succumbs to the pressure, causing water to gush out of all the vents. The water leaks out of the base and freezes in the cold vacuum of space. Additionally, it seeps into the hallways, creating a barrier between Ryu and Han. In the present, the water begins to flood the station. The crew regroups in the medical bay to discuss their next steps. Suddenly, Song starts feeling unwell and rushes to isolate herself in another room, fearing she may infect the others. As Song begins vomiting water and loses consciousness, she experiences a vision of drowning but finds the strength to resist, spurred on by thoughts of her sister. Moments later, Song awakens in the infirmary, shocked by her sudden recovery. Hong suggests that Luna's bite may have injected her with antibodies, aiding in her survival. Meanwhile, Han and Gong intercept Ryu's messages and contact Kim, who confirms that the SAA rescue ship has spotted a second spacecraft approaching the base. Concerned about Luna's fate, Song inquires about her future. Kim explains that Luna will be taken to the Ministry of National Defense, where the government will continue their experiment with her. Song adamantly refuses to bring the water back to Earth, expressing her concerns. Han reveals that he had asked Kim to gather other officials to oppose Choi's plans, but Kim explains that nobody wanted to join him because Choi holds considerable power. After the call ends, Song suggests they seek refuge at the International Institute of Space Biology. It's a safe and neutral space station where they can buy time to devise a better plan. Luna suddenly collapses to the ground upon hearing the water flooding the hallway below theirs. In a panic, she runs in the opposite direction, with the crew following closely behind just before the water reaches their hallway as well. Vent lids continue to snap open all around them, allowing more water to pour in. Fortunately, the crew manages to run fast enough to get to Gate 7 and close it behind them just in time. Here, the team discovers a very confused Ryu. He shoots into the air to scare them away, then starts crying and saying sorry for hurting people. It turns out he was one of the guards who stopped the scientists from leaving five years ago and even closed the gate on them. When they see the water about to break the door, Gong shoots Ryu several times to stop him, but Ryu also manages to shoot Gong. Finally, the team can move forward and close another gate just in time to block the water in. Gong is very weak, so Han tries to patch up his wound with tape and assists him in putting on his suit, but unfortunately, Gong still doesn't make it. After everyone is suited up, Han tries to start the airlock depressurization, but the system isn't functioning properly, so he has to do it by hand. Despite Song's protests, Han slips out and pulls the lever just before the water floods their area, causing him to collapse. At that same time, 
Song and Hong realize Luna has left without her suit. Both women rush out of the station, fleeing as the water crashes through the final gate and freezes upon reaching the outside. Later, they search for Luna and discover her gazing at Earth. Surprisingly, she seems unaffected by the lack of oxygen. Nearby, Han's body is brought down by the water, and as Luna tries to return his badge, he passes away, tearfully calling out for his daughter. Shortly after, a rescue shuttle finally arrives to pick them up. Thanks for watching our recap video. See you on the next one.